Paleolithic and Neolithic eras predate the invention of writing. Without a written language, prehistoric people left a legacy of their existence in the creation of works of art, artifacts, and structures. These early works of art are instrumental in understanding the lives and cultures of our prehistoric ancestors. The history of art begins in the Upper Paleolithic era. The earliest evidence of art dates to the last ice age, a time period known as the Paleolithic, a term which is derived from Greek words meaning old and stone. Often the term Paleolithic is interchanged with the English translation, Old Stone Age. During the Paleolithic era, Homo sapiens sapiens began to create art of two categories, mobiliary art and cave art. Mobiliary works are portable, carved of stone, antler, bone, and ivory. These are sculptural representations of animals and female figures, small enough to be transported by nomadic Ice Age hunters as they followed the herds of megafauna. Cave art includes any painting or sculpture created on cave walls, ceilings, and floors. Cave art is found in the inner recesses of the cave, in areas not used as habitat. This characteristic has led scholars to believe cave paintings may have been created by shamans for a spiritual reason, possibly for sympathetic hunting, ensuring a successful actual hunt, or to aid in rite of passage ceremonies. Almost all cave art depicts naturalistic images of animals. Representations of humans are very rare. However, many positive and negative images of human hands were created. Some of these handprints and stencils have missing digits. Do you think these apparent mutilations were the result of missing fingers lost to accident of frostbite? Or are they simply illusions produced by the intentional bending of fingers providing a written sign language? More than a hundred medium-sized flat stones were found in the cave. Some had been scraped with a sharp tool to produce a small cup. These stones were in fact lamps in which blocks of animal grease spiked with touchwood or juniper twigs were lit. When burned, these lamps would give off as much light as modern-day candles. Other forms of lighting for the prehistoric artist would have included small fires lit on the ground or resin-based torches. The excavation of the clay in the shaft produced this carved and polished pink sandstone lamp. The cup contained the residue of carbons from a resinous plant such as juniper. To decorate the upper walls, three to four meters up, the painters would have fashioned ladders from tree trunks. In the painted gallery, several holes dug into the walls were found to be on the same level as the ledges in the natural cornice. This seems to suggest a scaffold of tree trunks wedged into the rock, giving the painters access to the upper parts of the gallery and enabling them to stand and work. The passage was heightened to make it accessible for tourists, but Magdalenian man would have had to stoop. Thus, the painters probably worked sitting down. To paint the black cow in the main gallery, they would have been able to stand and sit on the wider parts of the cornice. Opposite, simple trunk ladders would have made the upper wall accessible for them to paint the five deer. The walls on the chamber of felines were low enough to be painted without ladders or scaffolding. The painters would, however, have needed to reach the bottom of this four meter deep shaft. A clue as to how they did this was discovered buried and preserved beneath several centimetres of clay, a fragment of rope made from three twisted vines. Persistence in penetrating the deepest parts of the caves is one of the most striking aspects of Paleolithic cultures. In the Combarel cave, one gallery is so low and narrow it can only be reached by crawling, and yet it was decorated for a full 250 meters from the cave's entrance. It seems like a paradox, but there's evidence that as the ice retreated, it snowed more heavily than it had done for thousands of years.
the changing conditions allowed trees to return to the north. The vast grasslands of the Ice Age gave way to forest and boggy tundra. And in winter, everything disappeared under a lethal white blanket. Without snowshoes, trudging through this deep snow is really difficult. For a large animal, it would be a struggle moving around in this landscape a struggle finding food and you'd never know where the next attack was going to come from. You could just imagine how exhausting and nerve-wracking that could be. The deep snow is a particular problem for the woolly rhinoceros. This young female is desperately searching for food. She's exhausted. Her short legs can't carry her any further. The last evidence we have of woolly rhinoceros dates to about 14,000 years ago in Siberia. It seems they just couldn't cope with that dramatic climate change. The habitat shrank and finally disappeared. And when the steppe went, so did they. The change from the Paleolithic to the New Stone Age or Neolithic is marked by the innovation of agriculture. As the Ice Age ended, drastic changes in the environment may have caused the extinction of the megafauna and ended the nomadic hunting lifestyle of humans. In the Neolithic era, small game hunting and the planting of crops supported Neolithic villages with a new sedentary lifestyle. Eventually, villages grew larger, work became specialized, and the earliest true cities were founded.